Hi, Russell Otter here. Now, some of you online asked me to get into more depth about the Facebook cover itself. Um, how do we use Canva? How do we use the, um, the video editing software? And how on earth can I actually zoosh up my video cover as well? So we'll get into uh, more detail. So what I'm going to do is I've already got the sign-up um, form here for Canva. Um, if you're new, all you have to do is just sign up. Um, you know, you can pretty much um, just use your Facebook um, profile to do that. But I've already got a Can Canva profile, and so right now we'll just get straight into it. Okay, so I've got rid of the, uh, my little video face thing there. Um, so the best thing to do is, uh, since I've already got a uh, Facebook profile, I can log in. Um, it's pretty easy to sign up. All you have to do is just, you know, sign up using your Facebook profile, or you can do this via email address as well. Um, but I find that uh, Facebook is pretty good with all sorts of multi-platform events. Now I've already got a whole um, number of designs already pre-loaded, um, but I am going to take you through um, the Facebook cover itself. So. Um, the best thing to do is that you can pick uh, Facebook cover design. Right, so as you can see on the left side here, you've got a whole bunch of design templates uh, ready to be loaded and um, ready to go. Uh, there's, there's tons and tons of um, templates that you can choose from to start off with, but if you're really wanting to, you can start from scratch. Um, myself personally, I would love to um, start with a pre-designed template. So I am going to literally, I like, I like the look of um, the Austin, Texas one here. So we've just finished loading that up. And as you can see, um, you've got a whole bunch of text, uh, some images in the background. Um, so, um, so what we can do, we can um, change this. Oh, I like to make things a little bit funny and quirky as well, so. And, uh, no more. Um, And oh. There we go. So as we can see, um, yeah, no more drama queens. In actual fact, uh, that's not the term I'm wanting to use. Um, hmm. So, yeah, as you can see, you can edit the text here, um, do all sorts of stuff here. Uh, say so I'm going to change the font size a little bit smaller um, because I want it to all be there, or all be on the one line there. Um,
There we go. So, if you haven't uh, suddenly realised, I have actually been selected to speak at an anti bullying con conference, um, which uh, it's, it's called the um, the Rise Anti Bullying Conference, um, made made up of about uh, four four hundred plus people, and I've been chosen to speak based on the experiences that I had. Um, earlier on this month, um, especially on the anniversary that uh, with myself and my wife uh, lost our little one, um, which was a very hard time. And so we were literally um, selected as admin of a uh, particular group. Uh, we got um, pretty much... Oh, my alarm clock went we, we got uh, pretty much targeted, um, you know, by a whole bunch of spiteful people, um, bullied uh, through and throughout, um, very opinionated uh, ladies as well, um, which didn't quite make um, make us, yeah, feel very welcome to be part of that group. So, um, so I just ended up having to leave, and you know, we just decided to move on. But they kind of um, reinforced my strength as a person. Um, to actually talk at this conference, but enough of that. Um, so I'm basically I've changed um, changed a few texts. Um, start moving forward and leave the backstabbers in your dust, literally. So on the left side here, you can actually um, have a look at the photos. Um, you know, the thing is, is that you've got to start making sure that your that um, the photos are um, able to be used, you've got permission to use them and also um, they're not copyrighted. Um, if they are copyrighted, um, make sure that you have permission from the author to use them. Um, in this instance, all these pictures here, I've got permission to use them from various authors and considering that the majority of them are from um, Pixabay itself. So, a few pictures here. Um, boom. Now this, uh, this is pretty much how you can make a Facebook cover with um, with utilising Canva. Um, the best way, um, you can also uh, change the name at the top here um, for your images. Um, you can also, I like to go filter, um, you know, change the brightness, you can chuck, chuck it down, up whatever you want. There's also a whole bunch of pre-designed um, templates that you can use too. Um, so, oh, not templates, um, you know, uh, was it capabilities, I would call these. I don't know what to call them. To and have a look at these advanced options down here. If you've got multiple, um, let's say, uh, Facebook cover templates um, that you want to design, so you can add a new page. So I'll just, um, I'll just get back and show you. Um, you can literally copy it. Oh, that's weird. It's not going to copy. Sorry about that. That took a little bit of a while. Um, you can copy this template. You can change your text uh, and also um, hit delete on the photo. Um, and you can change the background as well. Um, you know, and it's it's pretty cool. Um, you can also literally, like I said, change the filters. You can um, pretty much um, change the contrast, um, your brightness, or you can pick one of um, the normal Kelly drama um, edge of that drum because there's lots of that hanging around here, and that's what I hate it. Um, and you can literally also set the same type of um, template. Um, we'll just go back up here um, and change the filters, you know, advanced options, um, and you can literally change um, the filter code in here. So just get control V, boom, eases that. Um, yeah, I quite like that. So that's pretty much how to use Canva. Um, it's absolutely jam packed full of uh, editing functions. Um, we'll just go through the layouts. Uh, oh, I'm pretty sure you've seen that. So you've got tons of layouts there. You can actually add the elements as well. Um, 
you utilize uh, free photos, um, which is, you know, you can use them at your leisure. Um, you've got full authority to use them if you want um, and that sort of thing. Grids, um, you can partic uh, partition your layout, which is all this here, um, into specific grids. Um, you can also, as you can see, use a frame, um, shapes, lines, illustrations, that sort of thing. Um, there's, there's tons of it. Um, also, if you have a look at the text here, you can add your headings, subheadings, a um, bit of body text. And there's also uh, template phrases that you can use as well. Cool and a background. Um, you change your background if you want. I you like to use the um, photo as my background. And of course, you got the upload, so you can upload as much photos and pictures as you want, um, provided that they actually do belong to you and you have permission to use them. Now, if you're wanting to use, uh, you know, more images um, than what the Canva has, there is a place called Pixabay. It's uh, free images and free videos as well that you can use for your stock, um, you know, free of charge. Basically, um, you simply won't get. So, so as you can see, um, you've got tons and tons of stuff there. Uh, I can literally um, look up a subject that I want. And as you can see, I can use any of these pictures, um, literally, for anything, anything that I want. Um, the subject is bullying. Um, not to, you know, basically, I am speaking at a conference, so I kind of want to wanting to promote this. And um, you can use any of these images um, as your heart's desire, provided that they use in the right context as well. Now. There's another thing I want to talk to you guys and girls about. Okay, um, it's very important that you use your own images and you have the rights to use other people's or other authors' images as well. Um, there's a couple of reasons behind that. Is basically you can be liable for legal action if um, the images that you used by another author. Um, no, who, sorry, if the images are used by yourself and actually belong to another author and was misinterpreted in a negative context, which actually has an adverse um, reaction towards their brand, they can actually have you for damages. Um, it is very important that you only use your own images. The other thing is that if you're a website owner and you're using other people's images without their permission, um, these people can actually uh, go ahead and apply to Google because Google is a massive search engine or any other various other search engines out there and they just um, fill out a simple form. It takes about five seconds to do and Google starts to investigate if you're using their images without their consent and and it's quite easy to figure that out all right and, and i'll show you this i'll show you one of the ways of doing this very shortly um once the investigation is successful and they find out that you have been uh, using images without consent um they pretty much shut down the search capability of any website that actually has these images on it without the author's consent so they might be say ranking number one up here on google and hey presto um, they've chosen a particular model's um, photo stock without um, the author's permission um, and they just simply um, you know make the website unsearchable on any search engine out there so literally that will just kill their business until they actually um, take the image down but usually uh, things don't happen um, that way because people actually don't know about it. There's also um, court proceedings as well. Um, so the First Avenue is a cease and desist letter. Uh, very costly towards the person who actually has to apply for that. And I do believe it's around about hundreds of dollars um, just to get a letter created and sent. But um, yeah, let's not go down this um, that track. Now I'm going to show you how one way you can actually um, search for who's actually using your images on the internet. 
Okay, so um, what you need to do in your search engine itself is type in Google Images and it should come up with this here. Um, next thing you want to do is click on search by image uh, and also you got the option of um, post a page URL or image URL or upload an image. So I'm going to upload an image. Uh, it's pretty easy. Uh, let's have a look see. Okay, so once you've selected the image, you're gonna, um, it'll upload a file and it'll go and search through the web um, for anything that almost looks like this image. And so if we go uh, through here, we can have a look and see um, similar, any similar images and any websites that um, that is using um, this uh, particular image. So as you can see, I've got the, um, the visual marketing capture thing up in Wellington, um, the anti-bullying conference that I'll be attending, and also um, how to add a logo subscribe button to your uh, YouTube videos, that sort of thing. So at the moment, I've got it up on my websites and, um, and on my social media profiles. Very powerful tool. Um, you know, if this comes up to in, uh, in anyone else's website, you can literally start making a bit of a fuss about it and, you know, stop them from using your images any further. So that's pretty cool. So um, Google Images is actually a very powerful tool to actually prevent other um, people from using your own material. Um, yeah, and you can also uh, basically use Canva to zoosh up your Facebook cover um, thumbnails as well. As for the videos, um, you, know, you can utilize any video for your um, Facebook cover. If you're wanting to put a URL up the top um, or some sort of logo uh, or you know, have some sort of fancy custom animation that comes across like this one right here, um, yeah, uh, I, I can do that for you. Um, just get a hold of me at Russell uh, at russell-oliver.com and I'll tell you what, um, uh, you know, I hope you guys and girls find this of value. Um, I certainly have and I love doing this. Okay, I absolutely freaking love it. All right, so I'll catch you later. Winning in business.